Hey guys, welcome to the Old Ultra Runner channel. I'm your host, Jay Tynert. And today I wanted to do my race report on the Texas Endurance Runs 48 hour run race that I did this weekend. First, I will say that I think it was kind of crazy to even do this race or to be held in August in Texas. Um, I normally try to avoid races in the heat here. Uh, the temperature was a little bit cooler this weekend than it has been. Uh, I think we got to a high of 92 Fahrenheit on Saturday, which probably is 32 or 33 degrees Celsius. Uh, but it did get cooler overnight. Uh, the race started on Friday evening at 6 p.m. and continued until Sunday evening at 6 p.m. Uh, it was a fixed time race with a 48 hour time limit and the winners were whoever went the furthest in the 48 hours. Um, I kind of went into it with a, a goal to hit 100 miles. I really wasn't planning to go the entire 48 hours. I wanted to do uh, go the 100 miles and see if I could do that. Uh, I wasn't in a real competitive mood. I haven't been uh, running real well in the heat, so I haven't gotten in many, many long runs. I think I had worked on heat acclimation by spending a lot of time out walking and going for short runs throughout the summer. Uh, the race was put on by Rath Racing. Uh, friends, Kay and John own that company. They've been friends of mine for several years. I've enjoyed several of their other races. They put on Perpetual Motion, which is a 24, 12 hour and six hour, uh, six hour race in December. They also put on the Who Loop series that I um, have run in the past and the Dalmatian runs, which happened I think in February each year. But um, I had run, they've done the Wrath Endurance Run. They, they used to just call it Wrath, um, but it was always a fat ass style race. So she would just invite her friends we would run through a little local park and we would stop by her house as the aid station. So she only invited a, a few select friends that she really knew. Uh, that was really not even an option this year because the little local park we ran through was closed down. So there really, we didn't really have much of a route to do it. But she was ready anyway and she expanded it to the public this year. Uh, wasn't able to promote it a whole lot, but was able to expand it to the public and move to a different venue. That was, uh, we were very fortunate. The Colson's Frog Camp donated and let us use the venue. Uh, this frog, frog camp location is uh, a charitable organization. They help people with uh, pediatric cancer have a place to do a getaway. And uh, when they found out that this Texas Endurance Run was raising money for the Snowdrop Foundation, which is another organization that supports uh, research and helping families with pediatric cancer, they decided to donate their, their land and allow us to uh, run on the property. Uh, the actual property, the, the course was a mile and a quarter around. I would say, based after running it, that uh, it was about a half road we ran uh, we first our start finish was along a gravel road in the middle of the the uh, property but we would run down the gravel road get on the paved road that ran to the property but we would run down it and back i would say about half the course was paved and we would come back in run a little bit back on that gravel road then take a left uh, across some grass uh, we would get on it another paved section there was a nice little a uh, bit of water. I, I don't know if I would call it a full lake or not, but it's pretty good, decent sized amount of water. Uh, and they had built a dam through there, a place to cross over the water through. And uh, so that was nice. You got over the dam, it was probably 50 meters long, I guess. I don't know. Um, throughout the night, we were able to hear bullfrogs and things like that, uh, making a lot of noise. Um, we did see snake skins. So it was, uh, there was some wildlife there. We saw bunnies. Uh, I think the race director said she saw a, mini, a small bobcat one of the mornings. 
so, so we were out in nature. We were out in the country a little bit. Uh, the scariest thing I had is we were going through there one time with, I was with a couple of friends and we heard a hissing sound and then a large splash. Made us wonder uh, if there could have been a little alligator out there. <laughs> but uh, I don't know for sure what it was. But um, the day started out, we were probably around 90 uh, when we started on Friday evening. Um, took off. I. I was having trouble in the heat from the beginning, so I, I, my plan really was to just walk the first uh, couple hours till it started cooling down. Probably about 7.30 it cooled down, so I started running more, uh, and I started doing a run of run four minutes, walk two minutes sort of strategy, and was making some progress. Um, I was having a lot of fun visiting friends. There were people from uh, out of state that I had met maybe once before. There was uh, a bunch of my old running friends that like that live in different parts of the state that I hadn't seen in a while that I was able to visit. Now this wasn't a huge race. There were, uh, you had an option of running a 24 hour race on Friday night through Saturday night. You had an option of running a uh, race, 24 hour race starting Saturday at 6 p.m. that went till 6 p.m. on Sunday. Or you could do the 48 hour, which was Friday at 6 p.m. till Saturday at 6, uh, till Sunday at 6 p.m. Uh, I chose to do the 48 hour. My goal was to, my plan was to actually run mostly through the night and then I was planning to sleep during the afternoons uh, on Saturday and then I was hoping I'd be done by Sunday morning and not really run on Sunday afternoon because of the heat. But anyway, the start, race started good. I got to visit with friends, um, was making some progress. Now it was about 10 o'clock. I got a call on the phone from Richard Elkins who owns the Mile 62 podcast and the Mile 62 running channel. And he did, interviewed me during the race. And uh, if you go to the, my show description, I've got, I'll post the links there. Uh, so you can go listen to that interview if you wanted. And at that point I was probably 15 miles into the race, but I had a nice little chat with Richard that's recorded that you're welcome to listen to. Um, race continued, went through the night. Um, was not real quick, uh, but my goal became to try to get to about 60 miles is what I was hoping to get before I laid down. I was planning to go until probably 11 in the morning. Uh, I was hoping to get to 60 miles to leave myself only 40 for the following night. Well, I didn't quite make it there, but I made it to 57 and a half. Uh, and I've got a video now you can go to and see as I'm about to finish up and, and take Hey guys, so I'm reporting in. Today is uh, Saturday, August 7th. Uh, I am in the midst of my Wrath Texas Endurance Run 48 hour race. I'm about 16 hours and 44 minutes in. Uh, we started yesterday at 6 p.m. It's now 10.44 a.m. I kept moving through the night. Uh, I am definitely struggling in the heat and humidity. Even when it got better last night, felt better. I did not feel much like running. <laughs> so uh, I've walked a lot of this. But uh, I'm doing one more one and a quarter mile loop right now. I should stop around 11 a.m. I'm gonna get out of the heat and go lay down and sleep. Uh, I was up through the night. I'll sleep and get up and try to join when the next 24 hour race people start at 6 p.m. Anyway, I'm at uh, 57 and a half miles. So uh, my goal is to get to 100. So I've left myself, I'm going to leave myself about 42 and a half to do tonight. So I think it's doable. Uh, I know the second night is definitely most likely going to be harder. So I wanted to be over halfway. So I had originally hoped I would get to 60, but it's starting to get warm. I'm tired from being up all night. And I think 57 and a half is close enough. 
Uh, anyway, so I'm hoping tonight I'll be able to finish and get to the 100, or, or tomorrow morning rather. And it would be nice if I could move anywhere close to the same speed and finish. You know, 5 or 6 a.m. instead of going all the way till 11 when it gets warm. But anyway, it's been fun. Uh, the course, I'm on a section of the course right now that's uh, paved. When we came, the race director told us that it was about a third street paved, uh, about a third gravel road, and about a third grass. Well, I would actually say, after being on it for 17 hours now, that it's probably more like 50% paved, 25% uh, gravel road, and 25% uh, grass so I have chosen to run in road shoes the only downside to that is there is a section that they just laid over a dam that is uh, I, that is uh, freshly laid in a lot of the gravel is very large and loose and you kick that a lot and step on it and you can tell you don't have a rock plate like you would in trail shoes I thought about putting on my trail shoes but then I'd be running half the time on pavement and I'm not sure that's ideal either so I haven't really figured out the perfect uh, choice of shoes I may try the uh, trail shoes tonight but like I said I'm just doing this one last one and a quarter mile loop and then I'm uh, taking a rest anyway uh, I guess I'll call it quits I was hoping to run a loop and show you all the loop the whole course but I'm not really running right now and it would take me a long time to <laughs> record the walking of it so maybe this evening after I've rested I can uh, give you that uh, thing of the course or maybe I'll do a, a time warp of it so I, I can make it not take so long but you'll get an idea of what I've been running on anyway that's all for me now thank you Okay, so I was down in my break from about 11 a.m. until about 3.30, and then I woke up. I, well, I actually never fell asleep. That was my problem. I, I laid down first in a area that they had in a building that had uh, where I had a cot set up, but it was just too hot in there, and I was unable to sleep. I stayed there for about an hour and a half and was just sweating, so I left and uh, went to my car and tried to run the air conditioner, but... Uh, the air conditioner made it cool enough, but for some reason I still wasn't able to fall asleep. So it got to about 3.30 in the afternoon and I was like, okay, I've been down four and a half hours, I'm not sleeping, and I'm not making any mileage. So I got up and got ready and got on the course by about 3.45 and started making some uh, progress again. Um, I continued Saturday after uh, in the heat, and then it got cooler. I got to where uh, I was with friends quite a bit. Now my feet were pretty torn up by that point. When I stopped at the uh, 11 a.m., I, I knew my toe, my right toe was hurting a little bit. Uh, and I checked and I had like three blisters and another big one on the ball of the right foot. Uh, that's really all I had noticed. So I decided at that point to switch from, I had started the race in my Ultra Torn 5s, which are very cushioned shoes. I thought that would be great for a long run and I thought uh, a lot of it being on pavement, they would be the perfect shoes. The problem is they didn't handle this rocky section that was uh, going over the water, that they cut through the water that, that we called the dam. Uh, the rocks were real new, so a lot of them were like golf ball size and a little bit larger. 
and they were just all over the ground and you were stepping on them all the time. That was very rough on uh, a lot of our feet. Um, I ended up developing blisters, even though I'm usually pretty good about not having blisters. I had looped my feet, I was wearing my Njinji toe socks, but um, it still tore up my feet. My feet became very tender. And I was not the only one. Lots of people had issues with that. I do think if they hold the race there next year, by then the the gravel road will be would have been there for a while. The rocks will get settled into place and it really won't be much of an issue. It's just that they were all loose and still pretty big and not embedded in the ground and were moving around underneath your feet. So uh, I ran my first 40 miles in the Ultra Torn 5s and then I switched um, at 40 miles to my Skechers Max Road 5s just because they're even a little bit thicker cushion, a little bit higher stack height and I was hoping that would help. But again, uh, when I got to 57 miles, my feet were very tender. Um, I was uh, had developed some blisters, so I decided when I started back up to go ahead and put on my trail shoes. So I went to my Ultra Lone Peaks um, with the idea of being that the uh, rock plate might help with those rocks. Uh, I knew it wasn't going to be quite as good a choice for on the road, but uh, I was trying to protect my feet. So I did the last 42 and a half miles in my Ultra Lone Peaks, uh, and I do think it helped some. Uh, I just think that the damage was already done to my feet a little bit. So uh, I continued on through the night, Saturday night. Um, like I said, I've got a picture of the rocky section, and I'll show you that now. And then I also uh, just wanted to show a small, quick video of a portion of the uh, grassy portion we ran. It was very easy grass to run on. It was very nice and soft. Uh, any shoes would have worked well for it. Um, I will say that I was a little bit surprised when we got there. The, the 1.25 mile loop I thought would be fairly flat. It, it, there were never any enormous hills, but I will say other than that little rocky section where you were crossing over the dam, that was flat, but that was what, for 50 meters? Everything else was either a very slight in, incline or decline, uh, which probably added a little bit to the difficulty, but uh, not bad. But anyway, so here's a picture of the grass. Okay, and this is part, some of the grassy part we do. Actually not too bad a lot of the day because we get sun during parts of it. You'll see as I make this turn here, this time of day, the long part of it is all in the sun though. But this morning it was good. Anyway, as I continued on through the night, I was struggling quite a bit. I have to give a big uh, shout out to some of my friends that I got to visit with. Um, I got to, to uh, walk some laps with my good friend Gary, who's out in from Abilene. Um, he was in town, we got to visit quite a bit. Um, my friend Kathy was instrumental through the night. She was actually there running, a, she did a 50K, uh, she was just doing a 50K during the 24 hour, but she stayed with me pretty much until she was done. Um, she, I don't know, she probably started with where I had 20 miles to go and stayed with me till I had five miles to go and then she was done with her, her race. But she kept encouraging me, kept telling jokes, kept telling stories. 
and it really helped the time go by because uh, I was kind of in a bad place mentally there for a while uh, and, and, and she was a lot of help. Um, when I got to the last few miles, uh, Kathy had gone home, but Kay, the race director, was also doing a 50K on the course. Uh, it was interesting, I would do a loop with her, we would come back and she would need to do race director duties, uh, making sure the water was filled up or that the generators were running or various tasks. So we would real often have a, um, we'd finish a loop and then have a two to five minute break, which actually I wasn't complaining about because I was tired and I would just sit for two to five minutes, make sure my water bottles were refilled uh, and then we would continue on. The last three loops uh, I did with her, uh, one of them we went through, there were these little lights along the path. They were, they were stuck in the ground and you they turned them on at night. Well, the uh, second from last loop, or we, we went and cut off, shut off about half those lights. So I was reaching down, they were all about a foot off the ground, reach down and turn them off. Uh, the next, the next to last loop, we turned off the other half. And then on the final loop, we were actually reaching down and collecting all those. So as I finished my 100 miles, we also brought in a lot of the uh, little lights that were marking the course. Um, I finished about 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. I got to my 100 miles. Uh, the winner of the race actually did a 100 miles uh, mark. And uh, I could have continued on, I guess, and run some more loops and, and won the race. But Mark and I had both been talking together. We shared a lot of loops together that we both were planning to stop when we got to 100 miles. Uh, we were tired and our feet were hurting and that was just really our goal. And there was a uh, big prize for getting, well, not, there was a prize for getting to 100 miles and that was really our goal. So Mark got there a couple hours before I did and I, I didn't feel like it was right. He actually waited around for me so we could take pictures with our 100 mile awards together. So I didn't feel like it was right to go doing one more loop or something to, to finish ahead of him in the standings. It just, it just didn't feel right to me. So we both ended up with 100 miles, but he did it sooner, so he was the overall winner and deservedly so. Um, my big goal in the race was to get one of these 100 mile bricks. If you did a brick, you got, I mean, if you did a hundred miles, you got a brick, which was very cool. So that was, this was my goal, was to get a hundred mile brick for my collection. Uh, we also got these hand, handmade medals, say Texas Endurance Runs, RAF 24, 48 hours, and has the, their symbol, which is the state of Texas with a fire all around it. I uh, don't know if you can see that very well, but it's made out of clay. Uh, I also got a sticker that had their logo that said uh, 100 miles. I thought I had it, oh, right here. So I got this sticker as well. Um, so the race was very well supported. They do an excellent job putting on the race. I also wanted to give out a shout out to, uh, well, there were lots of friends on the course. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to my friend Ross, who uh, was not running the race at all. He's just a good friend of ours that does other events with us. Um, and he drove all the way out. We were probably 30, 40 minutes away from my home and he lives real close to me in Bedford, Texas. He drove out to the race on Saturday morning just to cheer us on and brought caramel corn to several of us. He went and bought it from a local uh, popcorn store and brought his caramel corn so it was just extremely nice um, I could go on and on about the people that I visited with but um, that's pretty much it for my race report it was pretty successful uh, I got to my hundred mile goal that's really what I wanted to do um, it may be a little bit my training for this next week will probably be pretty limited because I've got a blister on my left heel that's about this big around and I've got uh, that right right toe had the three blisters and uh, a blister on the the uh, pad of the foot just below behind there uh, and I just in order to continue running on Saturday after I took my break I wrapped it in tape and just stuck it in my uh, in Gingy toe socks and went well it's kind of a mess right now 
Uh, it, it looks like it was macerated and, and is all white. And anyway, it's kind of gross. So my feet are a little sore, and they're just sore also from stepping on those rocks for all those hours. Um, so I, I may be kind of reduced training for a week or so. Uh, we'll see how long it takes for my feet heat feel feet to heal. Sorry, um, but all in all, it was a very good experience. Um, I told the race director that I will sign up for next year for the 5K. <laughs> there isn't a 5K option. She says, well, our loops are 1.25, so the least you could do is 3.75. And I said, okay, then I'll sign up for the Ultra 5K. <laughs> I think I could handle 3.75. But uh, anyway, that's it for my race report. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video and you're still listening, please consider giving me a thumbs up. Uh, please, if you like this sort of content, please subscribe to my channel. And that's all for me today. And remember, keep...